Hi everybody, it's Claire from Garvin Library here and today we are going to have a Christmassy author spotlight. And the author we're going to be looking at today is the legendary Charles Dickens. Because if you want to feel Christmassy and you want to get that flavour of Victorian London, you could try Charles Dickens. Now, a lot of people hear the name Charles Dickens and they think old, historical, hard language and they're not like that. Charles Dickens was a celebrity in his own time. He was really famous. He used to do speaking tours. He campaigned for social reform and for education and the rights of children. Um, you would have been looking for his autograph if you'd been around when Charles Dickens was alive. He kind of shone a light on the harshness of poverty and the workhouses and orphanages and the comparison between that and the super rich lives who were profiting from the poorest of the poor. And this was quite shocking at the time. So although now we might see him as old fashioned, which he is because time progresses, at the time he was really quite iconic and really famous in Victorian Britain. He did tours around Scotland and England. So the reason he's iconic, there's a reason why I'll know his name and that is because he writes these fabulous characters. Um, London itself is almost a character. London's featured in all the books um, and it's the grime of London and the reality of London at the time. Um, the characters are woven into our social consciousness now. If I say Artful Dodger, Oliver Twist, if I say Miss Havisham with her gothic bridal gown that she always was wearing in The Expectations, you'll probably know who I'm talking about. You'll know who Ebenezer Scrooge is. You'll have an idea who Tiny Tim is. And that's because these characters, and they're named so well, that's part of the, the magic of Charles Dickens, are woven into our consciousness because they're so iconic. They're so unforgettable that even if you've never read a word of Charles Dickens, you will know the characters. If you call somebody a Scrooge, you'll know it means they're a miser. If you call somebody an artful dodger, you'll know it's because they're a bit of a trickster. It's part of our heritage, if you like. So why not actually try them and see what it's about? There is something really nice about, I mostly read modern fiction now, I'm sure most people do, but there is something really nice about revisiting that old, concise, um, exact language that was used then. Charles Dickens was the best Victorian writer. He's probably the best English writer second only to Shakespeare, in my opinion, maybe not in your opinion. There are some of his works that are hard going. There are some that I wouldn't recommend. I would not recommend Bleak House. Sorry, Bleak House. I wouldn't. It's just too depressing and too much of a dirge. If you want to try Dickens and you just want to try something easy, if you like, try A Christmas Carol. It is the best book ever and it's a novella. It's super short um, and it is so concise. The characters are so good. And it's the most Christmassy book you'll ever read. So perfect for this time of year. Try A Christmas Carol if you want to try any. Try Great Expectations. Try Oliver Twist, the actual story, not all the remakes that you've seen, no doubt, on the TV and plays and musicals. Try the actual original book because that's always going to be better than everything that comes after it. As we said, Charles Dickens is writing a lot of social commentary. He's looking at the harshness of reality and it's based on experience. He had a really harsh first couple of years. He understands how the poor are treated in reality in Victorian England. David Copperfield's kind of semi-autobiographical and it's all related to his experiences working as a child when his dad was actually in jail at that point. So there is a lot of reality throughout the book. There's also quite a lot of fantasy. You'll see that in A Christmas Carol, you'll see the ghostly spectres coming. Um, there is a lot of brilliant characterisation. There's a lot of different themes in Dickens. There's the difference between your public persona and your private persona and how they're always different and how they can greet and interact in each other. But there is so much to celebrate in them. I'm not a massive fan of a lot of the female characters. They're quite two-dimensional. You either have the angelic mother guide figures or you have the kind of fallen women like Nancy and they're never allowed to forget that they're fallen women. It, Bill Sykes says to Nancy, you know, do not forget who you are or what you are and that is very much the theme of the fallen women throughout so I'm not a big fan of that. 
I'm not a big fan of the use of coincidence, although at the time this was just a literary technique that was always used. Like when Oliver Twist's long lost family turn up at the end to give us this happy ending. I'm not a massive fan of that, but it is relevant to the time. It was acceptable at the time. Charles Dickens was one of the first to do what we call episodic writing. It just means that instead of publishing a full book, he would publish chapters every week in magazines. This actually allowed poorer people to read these books because magazines were cheaper. It was the rich that bought books at this point. He also published books with cheaper bindings to make them more accessible for people with less money. So he was very socially aware, although he was also very materialistic and he was very aware of how to make money and he made a lot of money. So well done him. The episodic writing gives you today's like Coronation Street or EastEnders. They end on a cliffhanger, they end on something you want to find out more about to hook you in, to make you buy it the next week, to make you return to the story. And then they're usually published as novels afterwards. That happened with loads of these books. I think the first one was the Pickwick Papers. So really good writing, really exciting writing. Um, there are lovely sentimental moments um, in a lot of Charles Dickens, which is what you want this time of year. Who doesn't want to be sentimental at Christmas time? So if you want to try this undeniably iconic writer, these are all South Ayrshire Library books that you can order into your local branch. There's also lots of copies on the Libby app, including audiobooks if you'd rather listen to them. Um, please try A Christmas Carol if you want to try any of them, or try something else Christmassy. There's loads of Christmas books throughout the libraries.